Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today, as requested by many of you, to do a direct head-to-head -head comparison between the Zeiss Milvis 135mm f2 lens and Sigma's new 135mm f1.8 art series lens. And so today we are going to uh, compare them directly optically, we will compare their overall rendering, and then at the end of the episode I'll try to position both of them in the market uh, to help you to make a decision if you're choosing between these two lenses. And so first and foremost we're going to do some optical comparisons and we will jump in and take a look at that and uh, help you to draw some of your own conclusions by seeing the lenses in action. So first, if we compare f1.8 to f2, obviously that gives a little bit of an advantage to the Milvis, um, you know, just because, well, both of them are wide open. So we'll just compare them like that too, and then we'll stop the Sigma down to f2. So here in the center of the frame, definitely you can see a little bit more detail that is uh, rendered there, um, finer just detail and contrast there at the center of the frame. Let's take a look out here towards the edges. And um, as we look out towards this corner, definitely uh, more detail for the Milvis, although it does vignette more heavily. And so there is a little bit of an advantage for the Sigma in that it's a little bit brighter here in the corner. But in terms of the actual rendering, there's definitely more detail there in the Milvis. We'll take a look um, here. And uh, definitely, once again, we can see that there's just more detail that's rendered there um, by comparison over on this side. The same is definitely true, just texture is a little bit muddier here and more, sharp, more sharply delineated there on the Milvis. Looking down at this corner, definitely a pretty strong advantage for the Milvis. Now if we look at these two images globally, exact same settings, exact same aperture, the Sigma image definitely looks brighter. Now I know that uh, the Milvis has been tested and it has a light transmission of a T-stop of 2. And I suspect that the Sigma will actually be rated the same as there is a cinema version that's coming out right now that is a T2. However, if we look at the image globally, the heavier vignette of the Milvis um, makes the image look a little bit murkier by comparison. If we look at the actual center of the frame, you know, I do think that the Sigma is still a little bit brighter in the center, and so I do think that the light transmission is a hair better on the Sigma, but uh, in the actual center of the frame, there's not a huge difference between the light transmission. There is a difference, however, in the overall rendering and sharpness, which still definitely favors the Zeiss Milvis lens. Looking out towards the corner, there's obviously even a greater vignette advantage for the uh, Sigma lens, but unfortunately, there's still definitely more texture that is being rendered by the Zeiss lens by comparison. And so I would say that um, in an apples-to-apples -apples comparison that the Zeiss is definitely the sharper lens at wide apertures, and uh, that is pretty obvious. It also is a little bit more consistently centered, and the Sigma, obviously, this particular copy is maybe a little bit softer on the right side. Not a lot, but maybe just a little bit softer on the right side um, than it is on the left. And there's definitely a pretty strong advantage for the Zeiss on the right side of the frame. One of the Thing to notice that uh, the 85 millimeter um, art lens was was pretty guilty of being less wide than 85 millimeters, probably somewhere more like 83 to 84 millimeters. And uh, the 135 is closer, although you will notice that on both sides of the frame, it is actually framing a little bit wider than what the Zeiss lens is. And so I do think that it's maybe just a hair short of 135 millimeters, but I think it's close, you know, maybe 134 millimeters and definitely within the you know, the, the tolerance range. And so, anyway, I think you're going to get pretty much most everything that you pay for in terms of focal length, maybe just a hair less than what you get from the Milvis lens. Now, if we stop both lenses down to f2.8, we now see with equal settings and a custom white balance that is set, we see that the now with the vignette starting to clear up on the Milvis lens, that it is starting to look quite bright and even a hair brighter than what the Sigma is. And uh, that's true even if we zoom in. When we zoom in, we also see that stop down to f2.8, the Milvis advantage in center sharpness does continue there. Let's take a look here over on the left side and definitely just you know, you can see more of that texture popping out here on the Milvis lens. I'll uh, take a look here up in this left corner. 
And uh, now, of course, um, it's it's not far off, but there's still definitely more resolution here for the Milvis lens, and now it's not suffering as much when it comes to the vignette. But I think that the Sigma is pretty close here out on this side. On the right side, as we saw before, uh, the you know the more consistent evenness of the centering of the Milvis lens is showing its worth here on the right side once again. We'll do one final comparison with both of these lenses stopped down to f4. There's really no need to go down any further than this, as both of these lenses are pretty close to perfect by that point. Still a bit of an advantage, however, for the Milvis lens. I think that I there's no real way to conclude otherwise than it is just a... It's a bit sharper than what the Sigma lens, at least in the uh, copies that I'm comparing. This is the second copy of the Milvis lens that I have used, and uh, I've also used a copy of the uh, previous previous APO sonar um, lens before it, the classic lens, and it's just, a, it's an incredibly sharp lens that really is an Otis in everything but name, and, and it certainly proves it here, but I will say that the Sigma stopped down here to f4, I mean, there's nothing to complain about, that's sharp from corner to corner. Now, I always find it constructive to uh, take lenses outside. Now, understand that while I've tried to equalize settings here, it's a little bit harder with some variable sunlight to, uh, to really get the exact same lighting. And so, as a result, it looks like the Sigma was a, just a hair brighter at the moment of the, the shot, even though they're just a few minutes apart. But we're more looking at a few other things. Number one, we're looking at the uh, global look of the image, both of them at f2. And so, of course, the Sigma is showing definitely much less vignette. That's a great strength for the 135 art, and it is perhaps the only area of weakness for the Milvis 135. I do, obviously, I do favor the color rendition from the Milvis lens, and this has been the one area where I think that the Sigma, it's the only real area that I think that it, you know, maybe lacks a little bit, is that I don't find the colors coming out of the frame, and I, I've used a custom white balance to remove that variable here. I, I just don't find them as, as saturated as, as some of the my favorite lenses. If we look here at the center of the frame, I've purposely chosen something that's going to really show chromatic aberrations, particularly in brighter sunlight. Both of these lenses are doing an exceptional job, and I really want to praise the 135 art for its near-perfect handling of any kind of chromatic aberration in all of the situations that I've put it in. That being said, obviously there is a little bit more resolution and contrast, micro contrast for the Milvis lens. That is an area of exceptionalness for the Milvis lens, and it shows its worth here. As we look at this defocused region, both of them are producing a really nice bokeh. I, I placed a second one of these um, kind of glass eggs here, and, and so that we could examine. There is, as you'll see, there is the slightest, slightest green fringe around the uh, bokeh circles for the Milvis lens, whereas the uh, the Sigma one, it's, it's basically completely neutral. One thing to notice here, however, is that you can see an inner line um, on the bokeh circle from the Sigma, whereas the transition on the Zeiss Milvis lens is almost uh, perfectly smooth there. No real inner line to see. But both of these obviously are producing a really beautiful result. But, I mean, you look at areas like this, and there's just a, there's more complexity in the color rendering from the Zeiss lens, and that's really what I think that I'm trying to get at and, and to point to. However, there is another area where you will find a bit of an advantage for the Sigma, and that is the fact that it has a little bit larger maximum aperture means that it is able to handle this area right here and produce just a little bit more softness as compared to the Milvis lens, even though they're at equal apertures here. And so if we just zoom into this area here, you'll note that you can see a bit of edges here whereas you basically just have an almost perfect creaminess here for the uh, Sigma lens. And so uh, definitely the Sigma lens does produce a very nice quality of bokeh. I think probably the best that I have seen from a Sigma lens. And so I've got nothing but praise for it on that front. Now, if we throw both of these lenses into a really, really bright situation, this is midday sun. And so this is a, a situation that would, it would torture both 
um, flare being flare prone, and also it really would highlight any kind of fringing here. You'll see that both of these lenses do an exceptional job here. Nothing to complain about. This is a situation where a lesser lens would be producing tons of chromatic aberration. It's just not there. You will note, however, that um, the Milvis lens holds up just a little bit better, a little bit better flare resistance, and just a little bit better contrast on these branches. Exact same settings for both of them. Now in this image, there's something to praise for both of these lenses. On the Sigma lens, I definitely want to praise the overall brightness of the frame. Again, this is outdoors, so it's hard to draw too many conclusions because the lighting does change. This was a couple of minutes apart, but it definitely, it has a, it has, it's controlling vignette quite well. And so I definitely praise it for that. Um, if you look, if we look a little bit closer, we're going to find that there is definitely just more sharpness and micro contrast for the Milvis lens. And but you know the Sigma is giving a good performance here. The Milvis is one of the best lenses that I know of. Period. And so the fact that um, the the uh, Sigma lens is staying pretty close here um, is is certainly praiseworthy. And so um, I think that the again the color complexity from the Milvis. I do favor that, but I do really appreciate the brightness of the image. And if you're going to be shooting JPEGs as these are, obviously you're going to get a much nicer result in terms of consistency of light across the frame with the Sigma as compo uh, compared to the Milvis lens. Another comparison here where the lighting can be a little bit more consistent. This is indoors, but just using available light. So a few things to point out here. Once again, I do favor the overall color rendition from the Milvis lens. If we look towards our point of focus here, you know, uh, the Milvis has a little bit more micro contrast there. I mean, they're close. I mean, that's the bottom line. They are close there. One thing, again, where I do favor the Sigma is that if you look at this area here, again, because of that greater maximum aperture of the Sigma, it's a little bit softer in this zone compared to the Milvis lens. And so advantage there for the Sigma. Now, if we look at one final comparison, there's a couple of things I wanted to point out with this. This is at f2.8, and so for one thing, we can see the greater, uh, I put both of these lenses near at their minimum focus distance. And so here we can see, of course, the Milvis has an even greater maximum magnification of a 0 0.25 versus 0 0.20, and both lenses are very useful, but the Milvis is just a little bit more so. Once again, a little greater color complexity coming out of the Milvis lens, and at f2.8, uh, we don't have a vignette affecting either one of them all that much. We can see here at our plane of focus that there's just a little bit more detail rendered uh, from the Milvis lens, and that is that superior micro contrast. And frankly, nobody does this as well as Zeiss does. I'm not faulting Sigma here. I mean, Zeiss is a master at this kind of thing, and it shows up. I mean, you look at this area here, and it's just, it's, it's doing a better job than what the uh, Sigma is in handling that fine detail. Not every lens performs as its absolute best at minimum focus. So if you're considering a lens that you might use as a pseudo macro lens, perhaps with extension tubes, and you want to get double duty out of it, I would... I would recommend the Milvis lens over the Sigma, mostly for the reason, too, that a manual focus isn't such a big deal um, when you are doing macro type work anyway. So first we'll look at the optical strengths there to sum up of the Milvis lens. In an absolute sense, it is definitely the sharper of the two. It has exceptional, very even, very consistent sharpness across the frame. It has fantastic contrast and micro contrast. And as a result, it is an optically superb lens that, in my opinion, is an Otis series lens in everything but name. And uh, beyond that, we saw that it also has beautiful rendering um, it has fantastic color rendering, and so if you're a person that prefers to not do a lot of post-processing, I think that you're going to prefer what you get out of the Milvis as compared to the Sigma, and that colors are just less saturated, the image is a little bit less contrasty right out of the box, 
And so my finding has been that the Sigma images demand a little bit more post-processing than what I get out of the Milvis lens. We also found, of course, that it has the ability to focus down more closely, and thus it has a better um, reproduction ratio, 0.25 times or a 1 to 4 life-size magnification, which is a very useful figure, and if you throw an extension tube on there, it becomes extremely useful. Beyond that, it does an amazing job of, of rendering fine details, and that superior micro contrast comes into play. Um, at those kind of very close focus distances. And so if you're looking for a lens that you might like to kind of double up as being a macro lens for you with extension tubes, I think the Milvis is probably worth the extra money there because it is that's definitely an area of strength. The Sigma has a 0.20 times magnification, which is useful, useful, of course. It's a 1 to 5 reproduction ratio, but less so, of course, than the Milvis. And as we saw, it doesn't perform... Um, resolve as highly at that minimum focus as what the uh, the Milvis lens does. The Milvis lens has a slightly better um, flare resistance and a contrast in that kind of situation. But at the same time, we also saw some strengths for the Sigma lens. We saw that because it has much lower vignette, that it produces a brighter looking image at um, at wide aperture values. It also, of course, has the advantage of f1.8 versus f2, which played into the real world in that, both in that light gathering potential, but it also means that even at equivalent um, aperture settings that the backgrounds on the Sigma lens are just a little bit softer because of the ability created by that larger maximum aperture. And, and so I, I think that that's something to take into consideration. In many ways, I think that the bokeh quality from the Sigma lens is just as good as the Zeiss lens, um, if not better. And so that really is saying something and uh, is, is a great achievement, in my opinion, for a Sigma lens. Uh, another, of course, intrinsic advantage that it has is that it has... Um, it has a much lower price tag, and while it sets a new high watermark for a prime lens in the art series at nearly $1,400 in the U.S. market, the uh, Milvis lens is closer to $2,000, and so it is still significantly more expensive. In terms of the actual build, the Milvis, of course, is exceptionally well built. It has all metal and glass construction. It has a high grade of moisture and dust resistance. And so it definitely is still the winner when it comes to that. But at the same time, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the Sigma build. It is a very nice lens. A little bit more, uh, there are some plastics that are built into the construction, but I find them to be very high grade. And I've been very thankful to see some moisture and dust resistance built into the series now. And so as a result, while I think that the Milvis is going to be designed to last better for the long haul, I think that this lens is going to work just fine for a long time for a lot of shooters. And so if you're wanting to save money, there's a pretty obvious place to start. The other area where, of course, there is a huge advantage for the Sigma lens is the fact that it has a highly functional autofocus system that's built into it, whereas the Zeiss lens is manual focus only. And frankly, for many of you, I know that's a deal breaker. You simply aren't interested in everything that comes with manually focusing a lens and the way that that limits perhaps the subjects that you can shoot with it. And that is a little bit more of a challenge with a telephoto focal length. This is the longest focal length that I'm aware of that Zeiss is currently making right now. And part of that reason, I believe, is that a 135 millimeter is a little bit more of a challenge to nail focus because of the very shallow depth of field. And so for many of you, I know that having autofocus makes all the difference in the world. And so if you are looking for a kind of more practical lens for day-to-day -day shooting that you can use in a wide variety of situations, I think that the new Sigma 135 Art is a great option for you. If you are all about ultimate image quality, 
and um, you prefer the richness, perhaps you're a, also a video shooter and you want the absolute best in manual focus capability and the absolute best when it comes to image quality, I'm not aware of any 135 millimeter lens in the world that is better than the Zeiss Milvis 135 millimeter F2 lens. And if you're about having the best, I think that your money is going to be well spent on this lens. That while expensive, if you compare it to the Otis alternatives, it starts to look kind of like a bargain. And so hopefully that will give you some uh, positioning in the market of these two lenses and help you to make a decision if you're choosing between the two of them. I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you'll look into the description down below, you will find a linkage to my full reviews of both of these lenses. You will find some buying links there for both of them. And of course, you can follow me on social media, sign up for my newsletter, and if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching today. Have a great day.